Dave Rose starts now. Inside, eight scores for two seconds. It is all over. Off the dribble. That was nasty. Jimmer from 40 feet. Good. He got it. I'm happy for our guys. You know, we need to shoot the ball well. We need to defend well. We need to rebound, share the ball, and then compete. Back to Hawes, who shoots a three in the corner and scares it. Oh, what a big shot from T.J. Hawes. Okay, over the child screen, the pick and roll. To oh, the with a one-hand throw down. This is BYU Basketball with Dave Rose, presented by Siegfried and Jensen, live from Studio C in Provo, Utah, with your host, the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Well, hello. Good evening once again, Cougar Nation. Welcome you back inside the BYU Broadcasting Building on the BYU campus for another edition of our weekly look inside Cougar Basketball. We're, of course, live in Studio C with some great BYU fans who got their free seats by going to byucougars.com slash Rose Show. And as always, you can join the conversation on Twitter with the hashtag Rose Show. Use that show tag to ask questions of Coach Rose and Lee Kamard be asking those questions later on in the show. The star of our show, seated to my left, he is head coach Dave Rose, two wins shy of 325 wins here at BYU. Coach, congrats on a nice bounce back win this past weekend after a tough loss in uh, St. Mary's. Yeah, well, thanks, Greg. I thought that the, um, the Pacific game was uh, a really hard fought, challenging game. And I mean, it, it was a four point game with a few minutes left and uh, we were able to, you know, finish it off and win the game. And you know, that's a good way to finish the week. The, the start to the week was a little bit tougher, but uh, I'm, I'm still wondering if, if maybe you're mistaken of who the star of the show really is, Greg. No, there's no, there's no doubt about no, that. This no, is, your name's in the you, title. You've created all this. This is, <laughs> this is your deal, man. We couldn't do it without you. People oh, okay. start filtering out if you weren't here next to me, I guarantee you that. BYU basketball with Greg Rubel. Yeah, we not the same ring, I don't work. think. But, yeah. uh, but uh, by the way, it's, it's a mini milestone, if you will, 325. Just the number, or you look at it and go, Wow. Um, right now, I just hope I get it. You know, <laughs> I hope it happens. So we'll, uh, we, we, you know, I, I someday will, hopefully, hopefully someday I'll actually have, um, go back and get a recording of every game and we can actually go through and watch them. I do know one thing. We won a lot of games with our guest. Yep. He's coming and up a little later. He was one of the winningest here. guys. Yeah, he, he was You're a guy right. who, yeah. uh, it was tremendous for you know the four years that he played here. So I'm glad he, I'm glad he's with us now, and uh, it'll be interesting to talk to him on the show tonight. I look forward to it. Well, let's uh, take a look at last week. It opened in Moraga, rematch with uh, St. Mary's. The Gales, uh, Dave, were out to get the uh, season sweep after a, a, a game they played with you guys. It went to overtime at your place, and here's early in Moraga last week. You know, we had a great plan, uh, especially offensively. You can see early. A lot of these games over there get away from us early, and uh, we scored and scored and scored. We just had a really difficult time getting them stopped. Um, and, you know, I, I thought that, uh, you know, you, you saw Luke get the ball inside deep and kick it out to Zach, and Zach hit a big shot for us. Here's, you know, TJ trying to find space and uh, gets his shot blocked but stays with it and hits a big three in the corner. You know, Elijah was, uh, you know, he, he was on attack all night long, and. They were really physical with him, and he, he had a hard time, uh, you know, finishing through contact, which, uh, when, you know, if we get him again, that's that's one of the real things we need to do. There's transition basket where, you know, TJ taking it from coast to coast and getting into the paint early and then being able to finish. Uh, they did a really good job of spreading us out and uh, and sharing the ball. That's one thing that they're really good at. Here's kind of a interesting play. That's, um, we get right late in the shot clock, and. It just tells you how things were going from there as a three-point game. And we miss a wide open three on the other end, and then Jock hits his first three of the year uh, late in the shot clock. Here's McKay. Cannon hits a, a, a nice shot to kind of keep us, you know, close. But uh, in the end, as it was it was too much St. Mary's. Big shot by Fitzner. Fitzner things seems to hit. Like one shot a game, and it's a big one? Yeah. <laughs> and, but, but he always seems to get a three against us. And, yeah. and then Nar and... Uh, and Jock were just, you know, just too good. They, they were, uh, um, you know, and, and they've been good from start to finish. I mean, he's as, a, he's as good an offensive post player as I think we've ever played and uh, continues to get better. But, you know, I, I do think that uh, there was a possession right there to be had that if we could have scored, got a stop, and, and got a little bit of a lead inside of two or three minutes, uh, you, know, it, it made, you know, the difference may, may, maybe turned out a little bit different. But... This St. Mary's team is good. I mean, it just so happens that uh, 
you know, we're in the middle of, you know, the WCC when Gonzaga has a team that goes to the Final Four last year, and St. Mary's is uh, number one in, in all the offensive stats yeah. as far as execution and efficiency and, and all those things. And that I, I think Randy would tell you that it's probably the best team he's had, too. And that guy right there is... Uh... You know, probably an inside track guy for the player of the year in the league. You've got some candidates, too, and uh, some national player of the year type lists that keep him on there. He scored, what, 31 and 32 in the two games against you this year? Yeah. It's kind of like Eli and what he did against Pacific in this year. You know, I think Pacific games, Eli has somewhere around 58, 60 points, you know. So he's, he's played his best, you know, uh, all year, but he's had two great games against us. Now, over the last four calendar years, back to January of 2014, BYU's lost 31 regular season games. That gives you 31 bounce back chances. In the very next game, you guys are 29 and two in the game right after a loss. What does that say about your program from season to season? Well, I mean, it's a real challenge. Every every time you get beat, I mean, there's a lot of things that kind of filter through your team. And I think our staff has been really united uh, in our approach to the next game. Um, but we've got real good competitors in our program. And uh, I think that uh, uh, as emotional as it is at times, discouraging sometimes, uh, the guys rally around the next challenge. I think that's one of the real um, fun things about coaching at BYU is, is what I consider to be the character of the guys and their, the character of, their, of them and how they compete. And so uh, it's, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not the funnest thing to do. I, I, I'm, I'm really happy that you brought up the 31 losses in the last – Five or six years. The important years. thing is there's a 29 but, wins but on the back there side. Are, there, are the, yeah. the, there are other wins that, uh, that come after that. And I, I, do, uh, I do give a lot of credit to these guys because they're, they're – and it doesn't matter what the format, who the captains are, who the stars of the team are. Uh, there's a real committed effort in that locker room to get on to the next game and try to get on a winning track again. Well, after St. Mary's, the next challenge was Pacific, and they came into your place on Saturday after beating you down in Stockton. And I guess because the game turned out the way it did, it, you could say it was a really fun game because they play kind of a I don't know, fun style in a way. For It's very entertaining, in-your-face, uh, very active style of basketball. Here's a huge play by Pate. You know, we were stuck offensively, and we were having a hard time scoring, and Pate comes in off the bench and just kind of got the fans involved, hit a big three, and here's a great pass by uh, McKay, but maybe even a better catch by Yo. I mean, it's it's amazing how good he is around the basket at his timing and, and catching those things and putting it down. But they, you know, they they just wouldn't quit. They went in the locker room. We were down three, and we were. I think I thought we were lucky to be down three, but Elijah was really good in the second half. Maybe maybe his. You, know, you start talk about the top five or ten individual performances in a half for a player at BYU since I've been around. I mean, he he just. You know, pen, penetrates to the basket, scores, you know, sh mid-range jump shot, scores, three-pointer scores. Nice play by, by TJ getting the ball inside. And they went to zone. Eli hits a big three against the zone. And uh, I think he finished the night eight for nine or something from the like field, that from four the field. For four and, three. But they wouldn't go away either. Yeah. I mean, you can tell that it's, uh, you know, we get a little bit of an eight or nine point lead and they come right at us. Here's a huge play by Tripp. He, Gets that offensive rebound and then kicks it out, and we foul on the three-pointer. Six again. They get a four-point play there, and, and then we, we execute it really nice here. We get the ball turned from one side, a great pass to Yo, and he finishes and gets a foul. Yoli's free throws in this game were really big, too. I think he was six for seven from the line. And so all in all, you know, we get an 80-65 to win. Looks like it's maybe been an easy game, walk-away game, but it was uh, a lot of free throws late. There's a lot of... It kind of things happened late in the game where we got to the line for a flagrant foul, flagrant one, a flagrant two. Uh, but uh, really happy for the win, happy for the guys. And, uh, and sometimes, you know, you, you don't really know how that's going to happen. You have two guys score big. Yoli scores big and Eli scores big. But, Greg, it felt as nice of a team win as we've had. I mean, everybody contributed. Guys came in and... Uh, and did what we they needed to do to help our team win, and and then Yo and Eli were you know carrying most of the scoring. And you hit on it, but Eli, one of the most proficient and efficient nights in BYU basketball history. This is just the one shot from the field, just the one free throw, and made all of his threes. And it seemed like uh, you know when he was shooting that the ball wasn't touching much rim on his threes that night. Yeah, and, and he's had a few games like this where you know it just 
as soon as it leaves his hand, everyone, at least on the bench, thinks it's going in. And we're surprised when it doesn't go in. And, and we didn't get surprised too many times the other night because he made them all. But he's aggressive. He's playing with great pace. He uh, is really confident in his ability to get a shot off. He's got great size. I'm, I'm really happy for Eli because if you if you'd watch what's happened since he transferred here in that first year not being able to play and how good he was in practice and then he got hurt last year was you know kind of playing you know not on, not on you know uh, full all, all cylinders and people started wondering well, you know what kind of player he really is and and we got that thing fixed and got it right and and now you can tell that uh, he you know he's, he's going to have as a good a career here as uh, you know all the, you know, a lot of the greats. He's, he's on his way to having an unbelievable season this year for sure. So, so we're seeing his partner in proficiency here, uh, Yoli Childs, who was, you know, in his own way about as good as Eli was the other night. Yeah. He misses only five of his 15 shots, and he was still just kind of getting his way back, right, from not feeling so well during much of that week. Yeah, I think that he, he, he did the best that he could in the situation, and and the game on Saturday, especially with the adrenaline, the home fan, the home fans, the crowd. Uh, he just kept, I kept asking him, how you doing? He said, I'm, right now I'm feeling good, I'm feeling good. And so we played him a lot. Um, How's he doing now? And he had a good practice today. So I think he's kind of overcome it and kicked it. And and that, that is really, really nice, the more Yoli-ness. Yeah, him. yeah. I, I really think that that Cougar Nation will understand what we're talking about. Right, but yeah, it works for them. If we get yeah. outside of Cougar Nation, they're going to wonder, what in the <laughs> world is the producer got going on We may have to go with, like, oh, Yoli Knight for oh, a yeah, different that, crowd, yeah. maybe, or, they would, you know, they would Yoli Cow. One. I mean, there's yeah. some basics you can go with. Yeah. But, uh, but, so, but there was a Yoli Cow moment with that dunk. That, that was. I mean, that, 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 those are good. I mean, people are getting kind of accustomed to seeing that. We went a long time here without a dunker, you know, and uh, – and Yoel seems, up. Yo, yo seems <laughs> to get a couple every night. Yeah, we're going to see that play again a little bit later in the show, I think. So uh, Elijah and Yoli weren't the only dynamic duo in the building on Saturday night. It was Ao and Teo uh, coming out at halftime. While you're in, a, in, in the locker room trying to figure out how to come down back from down three, here was uh, Ao and Teo and Cosmo and the Cougarettes uh, doing their thing at, uh, on, the, on the hardwoods. Yep, he can dance, but but Pate, I think Pate thinks he could take him one on one. <laughs> dance off between yeah. Peyton and Ao and Teo. Teo yeah. against. Uh, yeah. What's the ten for on the Cougarettes jerseys? That's what I asked. I wish I had any clue on that one. All yeah. right, have, have somebody figure that out before the before show. Before the end of the show, we're gonna get this thing. Why we're gonna have the ten on the jerseys? Yeah. What was that, producer? Yeah, we're getting an I don't know. Okay. So there we go. Well, we are going to work on it. It's going to come in on social media, I think, between now well, and the end you, of the show. Dalton and Peyton, I think, could go in a little dance off between. Uh, Ao and Teo, and another thing with Ao and Teo, I, I'd have never met them. I don't, wouldn't be able to tell One them the apart. <laughs> but uh, after the, the the game was over, I had 11 year old daughter Kate. I mentioned this on the radio. My granddaughter, and she was having a little party with her friends, and they were upstairs in the cougar room. The boys come up the elevator, and they went in the room with uh, the 11 year old uh, Kate and her friends, and. We've got all the recordings of the screams and the, you know, people, the, the hands over the, the, the selfies, all the things. And, you know, my daughter, Chanel, puts on some great parties, but I think she won't ever be able to top that. Yeah, that, that was the one. So, yeah. so they got a different reaction than you get when you walk in the room with the grandkids? Yeah, I, I walk in and they, you know, kind of wave. And, but they were screaming for this one. So. <laughs> and, and, and Kate, you know, she's a... The sweetest one of all, and uh, she, she, all of them run up and got hugs and whatever. And Kate ran over in the corner, put her heads over, hands <laughs> over her head, you know, like maybe she was just couldn't believe that it happened. So, dropped the mic on the birthday party. <laughs> on the air day. That's good. Yeah. They, were, they, they were gentlemen as they yeah. went. Yeah, uh, great, stuff. great kids. Love, they, 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 they had a, a really fun time in there. I got to see all the, the film and video, and that's the one thing about what happens nowadays is that it's it's just amazing that what, what you don't miss anymore. You know, because <laughs> everybody gets a shot of it, and then you get to see it and uh, feel like you were there. It's kind of like when I told you I was on uh, Eli's and Janelle's honeymoon. Yeah, yeah, you felt like you were there with yeah, them, but thanks to the vlog. Right. And yeah. really happy they shut the camera off. Yeah, you weren't there for all of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. uh, as we head to break, a uh, quick look at the WCC standings. Uh, BYU is uh, finding itself in solo third right now as they hit the road uh, to play the 1-9 uh, the team on Thursday, then the 9-1 and one team. On Saturday, That's you know, you, you get you get into this, and when it's halfway through, and, and it gets, you know, uh, it's amazing how many teams haven't played each other, you know, uh, after ten games. But um, you know, it looks like uh, some someone's got to, you know, 
figure out a way to knock St. Mary's off. I think San Diego may have a chance when they go down there soon. And then the Zags play in there again. But uh, I like, uh, you know, I, I, I like the fact that, um, you know, we've competed really hard against the top team, haven't beat them yet. But hopefully maybe get a third shot out. And St. Mary's on a heck of a roll right now. Nationally, a lot of long streaks going for the Gales. All right, taking our first break, folks. As we do, we want you to know that you can enjoy a full hot breakfast buffet. Dinner Monday through Wednesday. A kitchen in a large, grassy backyard along the Provo River Trail. All at the residence in Marriott and Provo. When we come back, we get into Gonzaga Week with Dave Rose as we continue on BYU Basketball with Dave Rose here on Studio C. If you have symptoms such as depression, fatigue, headaches, or an inability to concentrate, you may have low thyroid caused by Hashimoto's disease. We're trained in blood chemistry. We really understand how to look for imbalances in the simple blood test. And once we can identify what those are, then we can customize a course of treatment. Our biggest goal is that we can really teach and educate these patients. Red River Health and Wellness can help with a treatment plan remotely or at any one of our locations. So on season two, uh, I met my father for the first time. Whose relative are you? Uh, I'm Joe's father. I'm incredibly thankful that Rails of Race gave me the opportunity to meet him when I did. And then meeting him led me to my sisters. Go for it. <sighs> yeah, it's a lot. I have a baby brother. <laughs> Knowing that I had sisters out there who had no idea that I existed and getting to meet them. I'm gonna hug you again. <laughs> wow. It was so emotional and so powerful. There's a bond there that's very unique and special, and I'm just now figuring that out as a 28-year-old man, not knowing they existed for 28 years. Oh, this is This is medicine. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I believe it's really important to be well-rounded. Being here at BYU is the best decision I ever made. There's a time for everything. When it's time for basketball, locked in to play hoops. My first love is basketball. I want to play basketball as long as possible. I love the challenge. Lou runs deep on BYU TV. Don't miss the BYU LMU women's basketball game. Live Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern, 7 Mountain. Watch all of your favorite BYU teams on BYU TV, your home for Cougar Sports. BYU Basketball with Dave Rose is presented in part by the BYU Creamery, the classic BYU tradition. Have a scoop today. And by Smith's. Low prices, market fresh at Smith's. The third-ranked Gonzaga Bulldogs with the longest home court win streak in the country to host the Cougars of BYU. Big left corner, Winder. Winder drives right to the rim. Hands off, Collins was up, and in! And in! Free throw is good. It's a three-point game. Wilcher from half court, and missed it off the rim! And the Cougars have slain the Giants! BYU the only team to beat them here in the last five years, and they're trying to do it twice in a row. He'll fake it, cut off on the base, double team, releases to Emery for three. He got it! Nick Emery for three! Wilcher! Good one! By Ooh, what a play by Austin! BYU comes into the kennel and wins again! At home against the BYU Cougars, they look to cap off a historic undefeated season with their 30th straight win. Three through as he trots backwards. Emery, back-to-back threes, and it's a one-point game. Up here's Mika one-on-one against Karnowski, and Mika gives BYU the two-point advantage with one minute to play. 79-71, the ball's inbounded. Nick steals the ball, launches from half court for the finishing touch. Wow, no good, it does not matter. The Cougars, for the third year in a row, have come to the kennel and come up clutch. All right, so back on BYU Basketball with Dave Rose, presented by Siegfried and Jensen. Coach and the Cougs getting ready for a back-to-back -back road game weekend. And Dave, 2015, 2016, 2017, back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back in the kennel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's guys like you that make our job really hard. Because <laughs> we play LMU on Thursday. I and, know. Uh, we are going to get to Everybody it. wants to talk about the Gonzaga 
you know, week. And I mean, we're excited that we get a chance to play him again. But um, you know, this is a, this is a real challenge for us to, to go down. To, if you take the last half that we played LMU, we're down. You know, because they beat us in the second half here. So I'll uh, you know I'll, I'll let you guys talk about the Gonzaga. Uh, you know, three wins, and then when we get to that time, then we'll start talking. I have to do this. I mean, I got to knock on wood. I got to do whatever because seriously, the Thursday night game is a really big game for us. You will. You've already played St. Mary's twice. You've already played Pacific twice. After Thursday, you will have played LMU twice before you see the Zags once. And we are going to get to LMU a little more in depth, and we hate to keep forcing you. Yeah, this. No, this is not your fault. This is the producer's fault. So <laughs> we'll talk about it to Jeremy because I, you know, I didn't really like see the script of the show before I got here. You know, that's why I'm telling you this is not my show. It He's should not. be. This should be BYU basketball with Greg Rubel and Jerem Jordan, with the guest, the coach. It's it's Gonzaga week that starts with LMU, but you have seen a lot of these guys as you scope other opponents out. Was the point? You've seen a lot of the other team because you've seen. LMU and other teams play the Zags. So you have seen them more than you've seen maybe some other teams. This recently. is a really good offensive team. I mean, maybe is Mark had a you know a really deep team last year and a team that could handle everything. But the, the, I mean, this team can score in transition in the half court as well as any team that that he's had. And it's, and it's it's uh, you know it's backed up by how they're running through this league. I mean, San Francisco played them close the other night. And at their place, within you know eight or ten points, but for the most part, it's a, they're thirty-point games, and uh, doesn't matter if they're on the road or if they're at home. So we got we we got our work cut out for us when we get there, and, and you know um, they got two or three guys that can guard a point guard or guard the center. That's how versatile they are. They can switch everything. I mean, Mark's got himself a really good squad, and. Uh, we, you know, we'll look forward to it once we once we get ready for it. Once you finish uh, uh, finish with LMU on Thursday in LA, BYU and LMU at Gersten Pavilion. They came into your place and uh, and played you too. It felt like it was a 15 point game. But uh, what, what I remind, remember most about this game is how many fouls and free throws and just how physical this thing. This thing what was. I remember is how many fouls weren't called. Okay, <laughs> and not only you know on one side but both sides. It was a really physical game and. Uh, we played so well in the first half of this game. I mean, we we got up, I think, uh, 17, 18, 19 points, and Eli shot the ball really well in the zone. Uh, we shared it well. Um, uh, that, that first half was really good for us. I mean, anytime you shoot, you know, numbers like that, 59 percent and uh, 23 for 30 from the from the free throw line, you know, that is a big number for us getting to the free throw line. One of the things that we've really had a problem with against St. Mary's is right. we haven't scored from the line. And we've had a 62 and a 64 or whatever against St. Mary's. And, and that, that's something that we really rely on. We need to get to the free throw line and, and, uh, and score from there. So uh, look forward to this. I mean, this, this LMU thing, and, and, and I mean, it's real. We've been down double digits in both of these games the last two years going in there and been able to overcome it. Uh, Haney seems to shoot. You know, 75, 80 percent from the field. You know, at home against us, um, yeah, they're, they're, you know, they're really their point guard Bateman is a, a really tough cover for us. It's a matchup problem. So, um, we're gonna have to play really well offensively, share the ball, be really patient, not turn the ball over. We turned the ball over 16 times against Pacific, and that that needs to stop right there. I mean, because that, uh, you can kind of overcome those things sometimes at home, but on the road, it's really tough. And a lot of those turnovers against LMU last time we played them turned right into points. And uh, if you turn the ball over and get a traveling call, you turn it over, throw it out of bounds, and the game gets stopped, and then you can guard it, that's uh, a little bit easier to deal with. But a lot of these live turnovers are really hard to defend, and that's what LMU is trying to do. They're trying to turn you over, score out of it, shoot shots, and then rebound it. And that's the two things that they do really, really well. The win you got at their place last year was one of the best comebacks you've ever had. Yeah, and it uh, it, it got away from us early. I mean, it is amazing how how, how many shots they made it in uh, that first half. I, I think they only you know missed you know half dozen shots, and and uh, you know we zoned them a little bit in the second half, and we're able to get some things turned. But TJ really shot the ball late in that game. I I. Uh, you know, I, I, Nick both really yeah, had made huge shots. They, they made huge yeah. shots, but I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that game, and hopefully our guys will be ready for it. It's, it's, uh, 
it, it'll be similar to the challenge that we had the other night. You know, sometimes, like we talked last week, how different the Thursday night game was from the Saturday night game. This Saturday night game that we had runs into this Thursday night game. It would be pretty similar. Style-wise. So tonight's player guest is Lee Kamard, a former BYU player, current BYU grad assistant coach, someone with a special place in your BYU basketball history because your first team as head coach had Lee on that team Yeah, and as a freshman. Was, uh, I wasn't the, the, the head coach yet. I was hoping to get the job. But uh, when Steve left, that was really the first place I went was down to Phoenix and and tried to you know make sure that 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 we we kept that and he told me there in his house he said coach if you're named the coach I'm coming to BYU and uh, the next day I was named the coach and so we got him here and he, I mean he had an unbelievable career and then he had a, a terrific uh, uh, professional career and he and Sarah got to see the whole world together and now they're back home with uh, their boys and it's really it kind of warms your heart to, to show up at you know. 6.30, 7.30 in the morning, you know, getting ready for our staff meetings. And Lee's in there with his boys working out in the annex. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's fun to see, you know, what, what he's got going on. And he's been an unbelievable addition to our staff. And I'm really glad he's here. When I get to the Marriott Center about two hours before tip, he's on the floor with Colby Lee working him out before every game. Yeah, and that's, that's one of the things that uh, I think he really likes. He likes being on the floor with the guys. Uh, and there's so many assignments that we give him. Uh, sometimes I think he would like to be on the floor because on the floor he've, he has more control over himself. When he's up in the office, he gets told what to do <laughs> quite a bit. You know. Lee's coming up next. Folks, we're headed to break with a word about Utah Community Credit Union, helping people make smart decisions every day. At UCCU, you can get a low fixed rate on a home equity line of credit and lock in that low rate for 10 years with absolutely no closing fees. To learn more, visit UCCU.com. After the break, we are joined by former Cougar Hoopster and overseas veteran Lee Kamard. This is BYU Basketball with Dave Rose, presented by Siegfried and Jensen. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really? They do that? If you've been seriously injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies and protect your legal rights. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. I have spinal muscular atrophy type 3. Your brain can't connect to certain movements in your body. I don't want to be known as just the girl in the wheelchair. On the Story Trek reunion episode from the Lone Star State, <laughs> Aubrey was only five months old when I first met her. You got a tube running in here and you got an IV running in the head. That burns me. I mean, that IV wouldn't be there and that tube wouldn't be there if it wasn't for a mother. But now, a shocking update. A long time no see. And a man who spent many years behind bars. You're basically a psychologist, uh, you know, sympathetic ear. Join me from Texas tonight on The Story Trek. Tomorrow on Studio C, we build a time machine and go back and stop World War II, Chernobyl, and Matt from ever climbing on anyone's shoulder. It was dumb from the start. We paid a lot of chiropractor fees. It's just, I'm sorry. Jason's back has never been the same. It's true. It's, gonna... that's, all of that is true, which he just said. Shoulder angels worth all the scoliosis in the world. Yeah, tell that to Sean Bradley, huh? Guy still hasn't gotten over it. You know what makes me really excited about this show is uh, seeing the parents uh, really disgusted by the food <laughs> that their kids have baked. It never gets old for me. Every time we say it's time for the bake off, to see their little mischievous smiles come on their faces is makes me really happy. You're watching BYU TV. See the good in the world. Welcome back to BYU Basketball with Dave Rose, with your host, the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Back inside Studio C, our show is sponsored by Secret and Jensen. Catch us every Tuesday night here on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Use the hashtag Rose Show for a chance to see your question asked during our Q&A segments later in the show. Sitting alongside head coach Dave Rose, I'm Greg Rubel. Pleasure to welcome in one of Coach Rose's colleagues on the BYU staff who a decade ago was playing for Dave. He's one of the most versatile players in BYU basketball history, a former conference player of the year. 
current grad assistant coach, Lee Kamard. Come on, Lee. Yeah. Okay. Let's, go on. <laughs> yeah. Let's see how quickly our, our handheld guys can react here. Who do we have in the uh, in the crowd with us tonight, Lee? You have my two oldest, uh, Casey. He is ten, and Charlie just turned seven. And we just celebrated his birthday last weekend. So Casey's the, Le the LeBron fan. Yeah, he's a LeBron fan for sure. All right, good to have you here, boys. <laughs> so uh, you left BYU as a player back in 2009. You've been a lot of places since. Kind of bring us up to speed on the Camard family travels <laughs> since you graduated. So my first pro job was in Germany. And after two months, uh, I got shipped home, came in to play in the D League for two months. Went to France for the rest of that season. Played in France the next season. From there, I went to Japan for a season. And then the following four seasons, we uh, finished in Belgium, just outside of Brussels. So we talked about Lee seeing the world with yeah. Sarah and you're not kidding. No, he's been around. <laughs> so uh, has it seemed like a long time ago since you graduated, by the way? Or well, now it, that you're back, does it seem like yesterday? I mean, it's gone really fast, but when I think about all the stuff that's happened since then until now, it's, it, there's a lot that went into it all. Dave, did, was there a time when you were coaching him that you thought he would make a, a, a good coach? Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I, I mean, he's as competitive as, uh, as any player we've ever had. And he's at times a little hard to control and I think those are the guys that make the best coaches you know I mean the guys that uh, he uh, he's, he's not afraid to show emotion he's not afraid to buckle down and 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 prepare and plan and and then he had a he had an un unbelievable way of of getting the other guys around him to play with him and compete with him I mean we won so many games together it was uh it was tremendous and there were times we'd sit in the locker room and Kind of shake our head and wonder how it happened, but move on to the next one, you know. Uh, what made you want to get into coaching? It's just something that I've always thought about and uh, discussed with people throughout my professional career as far as um, I, I just like to be around the game and I want my boys to grow up around it. And so I, I wanted to give it a run and get a, a glimpse into it from the other side. And it's different. It's definitely different. But I enjoy it just as much. What are some of the things Lee is responsible for on, on say, a day-to-day -day basis for you? Well, you know, he's got, uh, as a graduate assistant, there's only, you know, so, so many things that you, you can do. But uh, the, the, the most important thing, I think, that what, what he does right now is the players. I mean, he just has a really great feel for helping these guys understand what we want from them as coaches. You know, he does so many uh, you know, tasks we've we've tried to teach him, you know, about equipment and about trainers and about weightlifting and about you know all the things that you kind of oversee as a coach, uh, and and then you know his he just has he has great insight from the players and to, to relate back to the coaches. What are your favorite parts of the job? Uh, being on the court and being with the guys, no no question about. It. I really have enjoyed staff meeting too, as I've gotten to know the rest of the staff and seeing their personalities. Because on the other side, you just think they're full of themselves and they <laughs> it's about them you know and then you you get in staff meeting and you hear how much they talk about the guys think about the guys and discuss how to help the team but also the guys individually I'm not sure how many of the guys on the current roster saw you play in your prime but uh, you know <laughs> I did and Dave did and we know exactly just how good you were what were some of your favorite moments as a BYU Cougar player uh, that's a good question I'll say this my favorite season as a basketball player was my sophomore season in the college college games with, with Kena and, and Jimmy and Austin and Trent and Sam and Mike and all those guys. I kind of had a, a limited role. I, I played a lot for that team, but I had a limited role. But it was expectations weren't as high and we overachieved and you, you guys know, got back to the dance. We we went to the tournament first time, won the league. We were we weren't picked to win it, I don't believe. And uh, so it was just a, a fun, good group of guys, and I still talk to all those guys to this day. That was your sophomore season where you made it to the NCAA tournament after an NIT the year before. Now, you were a junior when Jimmer Fredette was a freshman. Correct. Could you see then what he would turn into? You saw glimpses of it. You, uh, no doubt about it, you saw glimpses of it. I think that the summer after that, every day in pickup, you really started to see Jimmer be Jimmer. I mean, he would give... 
uh, Lamont fits during during pickup basketball. Um, and Lamont probably guard him as well as anybody, but yeah. Jimmer would just rise up and be dribbling to the right and then make that pull-up jumper that he's made so many times. It, it was more your team than it was Jimmer's team that, that, that year that you were uh, a junior and he was a freshman. He was a good distributor, too. I mean, he's known as a scorer, but he was getting the ball. We saw getting the ball to you, and, and you had a different role, and he had a different role. He, 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 Jimmer's a great teammate. He's not the most vocal guy that I've ever played with. But I, I think he's gotten more vocal as time's gone on. But he was always a great teammate, always a team guy, I felt. To think about the fact that you had those guys on the same teams. And then the Kinas, I mean, you had players of the year playing together. Yeah, we've had, hey, that's a, that's a beautiful thing about, you talk about winning a lot of games. I mean, that's why you win a lot of games. You, you get really good players. I'll, I'll tell you one story about Lee that stands out as, as much as any story about any player ever. We, we opened... Uh, the season against Long Beach State. Was that your junior year or senior year? Oh, that was junior year. Yeah, it was junior year. And, was senior year. and it, went to, it went to overtime or double O, whatever it went to. And we end up winning the game. Lee has 47 points in the game. Comes into the locker room and he says, first thing, you know, guys, if you guys think that I'm going to score 47 every night, you know, you guys better all figure out how we're going to do this because it's not going to happen like this. <laughs> and that's not normal. Most of the guys come in and yeah. <laughs> I got 47. Everybody served me some, you know, drinks or whatever, you know. But Lee was pretty smart. He, he knows what it takes to be uh, on a winning team. And, uh, you know, as, like I said, he and Charles, Charles Abuo, I think, actually has the, the largest number. But uh, Lee's won as many games as anybody. When, and when it comes to scoring, rebounds, assists, steals, I mean, in terms of all around, he's one of the all-timers. Yep, it was, uh, I, I remember sitting in places like the pit, uh, you know, the, it, the locker room at Laramie, Wyoming, and, uh, and just looking at his stat line and going, my goodness, how do we get this guy, you know? And, uh, <laughs> another W. <laughs> we're, glad, we're glad you came. We're glad you're still here. Uh, time for a break. We've got questions coming up for Lee in a second. Fans, remember, basketball season's blanket season. That means Minky Couture. Learn more at StopMinkyBlankets.com. More with Lee Kamard coming up. We've got fan questions for Lee. We've got 10 questions for Lee as BYU basketball with Dave Rose continues. Living at Trio is not about retirement. It's about fun. It was so different from everything we'd been taught to expect about senior living. I was delighted when we came and they had these raised gardens. Just love it here. I wish more people knew about Trio. Learn more at btrio.com. Hi, I'm Dave McCann with BYU TV Sports. Each season, we invite companies like yours to be a part of the BYU brand, aligning your business with respected academics and athletics. Becoming a corporate partner means you'll benefit from showcasing your products and services with game day signage, social media, radio, and TV campaigns. Whether on the field, in the stands, or on the air, BYU is here to help your brand grow. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. App Envy. Watch BYU Sports Nation on BYU TV and BYU Radio apps. I didn't think that would go public. There's a time for everything. When it's time for basketball, locked in to play hoops. Blue runs deep on BYU TV. Don't miss the BYU UC Santa Barbara men's volleyball match. Live Friday and Saturday at 9 Eastern, 7 Mountain. Watch all of your favorite BYU teams on BYU TV, your home for Cougar Sports. BYU Basketball with Dave Rose is presented by Siegfried and Jensen, helping Utah families for over 25 years. Cougars in the pros, Jimmer Fredette. Oh, ho hum, another 34 <laughs> with 10 assists and 4 rebounds. 
in 42 minutes over there in China today. Kyle Collinsworth nearing the end of his second 10-day contract. Mavs have to decide whether to keep him the rest of the way, and he's gotten a lot of good pub in Dallas. Eric Mika playing in Italy, Brandon Davies in Lithuania, and uh, Trent Place did announcing this week that he's uh, hanging him up. Welcome back to BYU Basketball with Dave Rose, presented by Siegfried and Jensen with guest Lee Kamard in Studio C. And uh, we've got uh, questions for Lee. We've got 10 questions coming up. But we're going to start off with uh, some Cougar Nation questions for you. Let's go to our studio audience. And Kavika Bringhurst is at the mic. Hello, Kavika. Hi. Go ahead with Lee. Um, what are the most points you scored in a game? <laughs> It was the uh, Long Beach State game. It wasn't 47. It was 36 points. Oh. <laughs> I think on 13 shots. Very, very efficient. One of those efficient nights. Uh, overseas when you were playing there, uh, big scoring nights or more moderate for you? Uh, more moderate. I think I had a 30-point night uh, in my second to last season. Okay. Uh, Twitter question for you from at Ryben3. Uh, who was the toughest opponent for you to guard in your college or pro career? College career, freshman year, Eastern Washington, Rodney Stuckey. He's still in the NBA, I believe. Okay. Drafted by the Pistons, I think, eventually. Yeah, he had 26 against us, I believe. Okay, good stuff. All right, uh, time for 10 questions. We have a, it's a clever little segment. It consists of 10 questions, so, so we, we call it 10 questions. All right, uh, time for the skinny mic. Thank you, uh, Julian. Game show mic here. All right, uh, first up, leaderboard. Let's see who's done what on 10 questions this year. We're getting late in the season. Still no perfect scores, but four nine for 10s up there. And then Dalton last week uh, pulled in with an 8. All right, here we go. Question one. Ready to roll? Uh, you and Jonathan Tavernari are 14th and 15th in BYU's career scoring list. Who made more field goals in their BYU career? You, JT, or did you both make the exact same number of shots over four seasons? Oh, that's a tough one. Did uh, you both make, I mean, wouldn't it be crazy if you made the exact same number yeah, of shots? That would be crazy. We must have made the exact same. Yes, line. yes, you guys are right, yeah. <laughs> 561 field goals for each of you. Oh. There you go. Uh, question number two. You're one for one. What's the capital city of Belgium? Uh, I would say Brussels. There it is. Brussels is correct. <laughs> you live just outside of Brussels? Yeah, about 20 minutes. Alst okay. was the city. Okay. Uh, question three. This actor and director played the character Mars Blackman in a series of famous commercials with Michael Jordan for Jordan's Nike <laughs> shoe brand. Who is it? Spike Lee. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, he's got a chance now. Yeah. Yeah. Three for three. And Usually the after questions get, get the our guys. Question. <laughs> Dave knows the, the yeah, deal. Hey, you're on a roll here. All right, question four. During your freshman season at BYU, four players averaged double figure scoring. Name three of them. Oh, wow. Trent Playstead. That's one. Brock Richner. That's two. Uh, Kena Young. That's three. Can you get all four? Uh, I heard the buzzer. So yeah. I got all four. <laughs> you got the bell. Yeah, for, for bonus points, uh, Jimmy Balderson okay. was the fourth. All right, you're four for four. Question five. Which of these two NBA players have scored more career points, David Lee or Courtney Lee? Well, I'll go David Lee. David Lee, oh. yes. <laughs> David Lee is at like 11,000 plus. I was surprised. Courtney Lee is like at around 8,000. I didn't think you'd have that many. That's pretty good. Way to go. Oh, by the way, you're perfect. Five for five. I, I want to get bragging rights for the guys. <laughs> okay. You know? Question six. You played two seasons with Jimmer Fredette. Who made more threes during those two seasons, you or Jimmer? Jimmer. Oh, I did. Lee Kamard, 96. Jimmer Fredette, 95. <laughs> You're the man, Lee. All right. Staying it. <laughs> Always bet on yourself. Uh, question seven. You played in three NCAA tournaments at BYU. Who were your first round opponents in each one? Uh, Texas A&M, Texas A&M, Xavier, sophomore year. There you go. Good job. All right. We're about to see the competitive side. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Six for seven. Uh, question eight. TJ Hawes currently wears the jersey number 30. It was your number, right? Uh, which member of the current BYU roster wore the number 30 before TJ? Dal Nixon. Yep. <laughs> seven for eight. Question nine. Which of your colleagues on the current BYU coaching staff would score the highest on Jeopardy? Oh, Jeopardy, it would probably be Coach Rose. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's a good default answer, by the yeah. way, with any of yeah. those. Uh, question <laughs> 10. In which of the following countries' professional leagues did you most enjoy the food? Germany, France, Japan, or Belgium? Uh, Belgium. There it for is. Sure. Nine for, for sure. 10. You miss a perfect score by uh, one three-point shot that you, you made. 
Uh, people get really sad about that. But uh, uh, yeah. hey, you know what? It's still top of the leaderboard right there. Lee Kamar <laughs> with a nine for ten. Way to go, Lee. Good job. Thank you. My family's not going to let me down. <laughs> all right. Hey, we're taking a we need to bring them all back. Like a, uh, if, like we a, don't, if we don't get a 10 for 10 <laughs> at the last end? show, we need to bring them all back. For like a playoff, yeah. right? We, okay. can't, we can't leave with a tie. Our producers are considering that right okay. now. Okay, all right. After and the you break. know what? That might be what the 10 was on the girls' jerseys. Oh, by the way, we found out what the 10 was for. Okay. We're going to okay. share it with you later. A little oh. later on the show. It's a tease. After the break, your questions for the coach, Dave Rose, coming up. This is BYU Basketball with Dave Rose. Stay with us. <laughs> Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork offers a large inventory of Ford vehicles, including a selection of cars and trucks, providing a range of transportation choices. From the Ford Fusion sedan and the Edge crossover SUV to a range of pickups, including the F-150. Each product line comes with options to enhance performance, comfort, and safety. Think Ford, think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. What are you suggesting? We bargain. They let us rescue Lynn, we find the ancestor. The companion does the rest. Once it's taken root and you're one of us, we can begin with the drone. Duncan can help us. We can't just leave him there. Don't pretend that this has anything to do with Lynn. This is about you. You can identify these people. Show me the others. Watch Extinct on BYU TV. Social media, hashtags, internet, what? These are some super confusing things, but all you need to know is that Studio C is on YouTube and we are always releasing new videos. Subscribe to see all the cool stuff we're gonna be doing next. Find Studio C on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Connect with us, we'll connect with you. Sports, not my thing. That's okay, you can watch Studio C. Um, how many of the field goals equate to uh, a basket. 7.2. I was not aware that there would be this much math in and sports. Me neither. Is there yeah. a lot of running in baseball? Yeah. It's oh, like man. boxing. Spence and I feel like we're just the connection between BYU sports and the fans. It has meaning, right? BYU sports matters to people, so it's great to be a part of that. Blue runs deep on BYU TV. Don't miss the BYU LMU women's basketball game. Live Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern, 7 Mountain. Watch all of your favorite BYU teams on BYU TV. Your home for Cougar Sports. You're watching BYU TV. See the good in the world. Back here over the child screen, the pick and roll. Oh, yeah. That's the exciting play of the game presented by Nissan, a proud partner of the BYU Cougars. Nissan, innovation that excites. We're back on BYU Basketball with Dave Rose here in Studio C. I got very excited about that particular play. That was something. Great pass from uh, McKay. I thought it might have been a little too far back for Yo. He went back and got it. Yeah, like I said, he, he, early in the show, he, he's got amazing timing around the rim. And, you know, um, I remember I played with a couple guys who could catch those things. And, uh, and throw him down. And I, I remember a conversation I had in the locker room once. I, I threw an alley oop pass to one of the guys, and it didn't work. You know, it kind of went off the rim or whatever. And Clyde Drexler, who was the best that maybe I've ever seen, he uh, he walked behind me, heard the conversation. And he said, "He said, Dave, man, it's, it's not about how where you throw the pass. It's who you throw the pass to." <laughs> As long as it's to Clyde. And as, and as long as it's to Yo, it's yeah. looking pretty good right now. Yeah. There, was, there was a few years ago, we were playing in Fort Collins, and Austin Ames oh. threw up an alley-oop from about half court, I think, to Trent placed it. Now, he's 6'11", so he gets up, but the athleticism he had, and he reached back and got one. It was one of the best I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. Was, I mean, he was on the move, running in transition, and twisted his body and got that thing and threw it home. And it's, it's just crazy. <laughs> that we had one angle, little angle of, of it from the very top of the arena. I mean, nowadays you'd have 10 different shots just from, just from you know, cell cameras. Phones. Yeah. yeah, but, uh, but it, was, uh, it was pretty impressive, it that's was. for sure. All right, let's uh, get to some questions now for Coach Rose here in our first Q&A segment. We're in studio here with uh, Gideon Barry. Hello, Gideon. Hello. Go ahead with Coach. Um, what do you think was your favorite game to coach? My favorite game to coach? Yeah. Well, you know, there's there's been so many of them. I, I'll, I'll go with a, a pretty popular one when uh, we played Gonzaga in Denver, uh, the second round of the NCAA tournament, and uh, everybody 
you know, we were the higher seed, but everybody was picking the Zags to beat us because they had played so well, and we didn't play very well the first game. And and we went in there and got them pretty good and advanced to the Sweet 16. That was a fun one. That was a really good one. Gideon, thanks for the question. Good stuff. Uh, we'll have more Q&A coming up after the break with Dave Rose. This is BYU Basketball with Dave Rose here in Studio C. When the Sports Nation guys do a show at Deseret First Credit Union, you never know which BYU Sports VIP might show up. That's the oh, Cosmo Bill. The Cosmo Bill's rolling up, baby. Woo! Cosmo's here. Hey, maybe Cosmo needs a student checking account or a soda inside. This has already been the best in a minute ever. 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 Well, pump that music, Cosmo. Deseret First Credit Union. Proud to support BYU Sports Nation on BYU Radio and BYU TV. Tomorrow on Studio C, we build a time machine and go back and stop World War II, Chernobyl, and Matt from ever climbing on anyone's shoulder. It was dumb from the start. We paid a lot of chiropractor fees. It's just, I'm sorry. Jason's back has never been the same. It's true. It's, you gonna... it's, all of that is true, what you just said. Shoulder angels worth all the scoliosis in the world. Yeah, tell that to Sean Bradley, huh? Guy still hasn't gotten over it. BYU game day, and we are ready to go. Make sure that you take out your frustrations on this week. It is rivalry week here in Provo. Greatness, you have to be perfect. BYU Basketball with Dave Rose is brought to you in part by Nissan, innovation that excites. All right, into our final Q&A segment for Coach Rose. Use the hashtag Rose Show to get a question in every week for us from Twitter at M Chamberlain. CPA asks Coach Rose, and I'll preface this question with a stat. You lead the nation in free throw defense at 61.7%. The next best team is 65%. So, like, you're far and away the best team at defending free throws. Uh, the question from our aforementioned Twitter follower, what's your secret for defending free throws so well? I think it's uh, Heath Schroyer's face. <laughs> He's so mad, okay, <laughs> that we put the guy at the line because he has a chance to score, and they look over there, and they miss. They see Heath. But I do have a couple other things on my mind right now uh, okay. besides that free throw. All right. One is how mad Lee Kamard is right now because he missed one question. One question, yeah. and now he's just even with the guys <laughs> when he could have easily. Bragging rights for the rest of the season. Just, yeah, right. Could have finished that off. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is one of my favorite games. I, we, we see it every game here, every, every time on the show when Jimmer hits the half-court shot. Utah? Or three, that, that was a pretty fun game, too. That was a blast. Yeah. And, I mean, what did he have in that first half? It was as many 30, as wanted. 32, 33 yeah. points in that first half. Yeah. Ended up in the 40s. And that, the, the best thing about that night was that, like, it, was, it felt like it was BYU's gym, yeah. the way that you guys played the game and Jimmer went off that well, night. Well, yeah, I, the, the, the great thing about it has happened a few times. At Arizona, I remember, I mean, the, the people are cheering for him. I think the Utah people were actually, you know, cheering for the show that they got to see from the kid. I mean, it was trem tremendous. Great moment. We're back to wrap things up in a minute. This is BYU Basketball with Dave Rose. Where's the cereal? Should be in there. I threw it out to make room for these. Mom, what? You have to eat more than just cereal. But this isn't even my apartment. How'd you get in? Listen, you can never escape a mother's love. And the answer is a crowbar. Is that my shirt? Yes, honey. I'm just going to borrow it for a few days. Get groceries without mom. BYU Meal Plans. Quarterback. 
and App Envy. Watch BYU Sports Nation on BYU TV and BYU Radio apps. I didn't think that would go public. Blue runs deep on BYU TV. Don't miss the BYU UC Santa Barbara men's volleyball match. Live Friday and Saturday at 9 Eastern, 7 Mountain. Watch all of your favorite BYU teams on BYU TV. Your home for Cougar sports. Hey guys, do you have a smartphone? Do you have the Instagram app? Then you should be following Studio CTV. We post tons of behind the scenes stuff, Instagram sketches, and lots of pictures of us just having fun. So make sure you follow us. Find Studio C on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Connect with us, we'll connect with you. This is a show that the entire family can watch together. I'm talking about grandparents, the parents, and the kids. And it happens all the time. I can't tell you how many times somebody writes us or I bump into somebody and they go, we love the show. And all of us get together to watch it. Why? Because there's something about it that not only excites you through the competition of the race, but then inspires you when they find family. After all, family's what it's all about. You're watching BYU TV. See the good in the world. Welcome back to BYU Basketball with Dave Rose, presented by Siegfried and Jensen. Here's the broadcast schedule for this week. BYU and LMU from L.A. Thursday, late one. 11 o'clock Eastern, 9 o'clock Mountain on AT&T Sportsnet, Rocky Mountain, and Spectrum. And on the radio, BYU Radio, pregame at 10 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock in the Mountain Time Zone. Then Saturday, BYU goes 4-4 in a row in Spokane against the 14th-ranked Bulldogs of Gonzaga. 10 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock Mountain, 7 o'clock pregame on the radio, BYU Radio. Then the game on ESPN2. Welcome back to the program. Uh, a couple of things, kind of housekeeping items before we get to a Twitter question. You asked earlier in the show about the uh, Cougarettes uh, shirts they were wearing in the AO and TAO routine. They all had tens on them, right? We found out, uh, courtesy of BYU's fine marketing director, David Almodova, that the 10 is a reminder that they want to put out a perfect 10 in every routine they do. So they want to put out a perfect 10 every night. So, well, that's good. There you go. I thought all the Cougarettes were a 10. <laughs> <laughs> well, that could be double meaning there, yeah, yeah because they are. Uh, so they want to be a put out a 10 every week. We have that. Uh, and from Twitter, question from at Jay Olson 49. What do you lead with when pitching BYU to a potential recruit? I think the first thing we start with is just a tradition. I mean, I, we've got a, an unbelievable tradition of, uh, of just excellence here. I, I think that the, the fan base has, you know, uh, been supporting this team for, for hundreds of years. I mean, it's, it's just crazy to get some of the old old photos and see the the the, the gym over at BYU uh, high or on on Main Street there and uh, the place was packed then and is packed in the field house and place has been packed in the marriage center and and I think that's where we start is just that you know this is a um, uh, a program that's had great players and has had great success and we'd love to have you come and continue it Great. Well, about 30 seconds to go is all. It is Gonzaga week, and that's exciting. But first things first, and that uh, means your most important game is your next game, Thursday, L.A. Yeah, we, we're going to have to handle the pressure. Uh, they, we're not going to let them sp – they can't speed us up. we got to trust what we do, and then we got to be able to go out and do it. And uh, they made it hard for us in the second half here, so hopefully we'll be better at it. All right, that's BYU and Loyola Marymount. It'll be at 10 o'clock – uh, Mountain Time pregame, 11, or 10 o'clock Eastern Time pregame, 11 o'clock Eastern Time tip for the Cougars and the Lions. Coach, good luck this week. Hey, thanks a lot, Greg. All right, fans, love to see you here in Studio C for next week's show. To request seats, go to byucougars.com slash Rose Show next Monday or Tuesday for next Tuesday's show. We'll talk to you next Tuesday, 8 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Mountain for Lee Kamard and Dave Rose. I'm Greg Rubel. This has been BYU Basketball with Dave Rose live from Studio C. Good night. Spinal muscular atrophy type 3. Your brain can't connect to certain movements in your body. I don't want to be known as just the girl in the wheelchair. Sports not my thing. That's okay, you can watch studio soon. Um, how many of the field goals equate to uh, a basket? 7.2. I was not aware that there would be this much math in sports. Me neither. Is there yeah. a lot of running in baseball? Yeah. It's oh, like man. boxing. Spence and I feel like we're just the connection between BYU sports and the fans. It has meaning, right? BYU sports matters to people, so it's great to be a part of that.